Today, I'm going to talk about resemblance between ancient anti-gravity technique and a modern successful experiment conducted by scientists. There are many megalithic structures all over the world. For example, a lot of huge stones were utilized for pyramids and other structures in ancient Egypt. In general, it is thought that those huge stones were carried by many people with threads, rollers, and ropes. There are even pictures that describe the work. I think the majority of the stones were carried in that way. But at the same time, I think there were other methods by limited sages who know how to control the weight of the stones. I think one of those is the way to utilize the vibrations. 10th century Arab historian Al Masudi learned how Egyptian pyramids were built and wrote the story in 947. Of course, he didn't witness the work as he lived in the 10th century, not thousands of years ago. So I think he learned the story from wise men in Egypt in those days. But the story was quite impressive for researchers like me. Here is the story. There was a paved pathway surrounded on both sides by mysterious metal rods. Magical papyrus was carefully positioned underneath the edge of the mighty stones lying in a row on the pathway. Then one by one the stones were struck by a similar but different metal rod. The stones then slowly began to rise in the air in a row. Then the stones moved forward for about 150 feet. Each process was repeated every 100 feet to the destination. Then the stones were struck to float even higher in the air. When they reached the desired point, they were carefully manipulated into place, one by one, by hand. This is how the pyramid stones were carried, by the description of Al Masudi. This picture is what I drew, but a little bit different from the description by Al Masudi. For example, I drew only one stone with low trajectory for easy understanding. Now, there are a few interesting points I want you to remember. First, there is a possibility that the stones were vibrated thanks to the magical papyrus. If the stone touched with the surface of the pathway with wide area, it may not vibrate well, so the papyrus may have helped its mobility. Second, metal rods standing both sides may have produced electrostatic field by rubbing to act on the stone. If so, metal rods should stand more and surround the stone. Let's see the second example. In 1919, Dr. Kowski and Frost conducted interesting experiment in Poland. They emitted very high frequency to a piece of quartz, quartz resonator. Then the crystal expanded, lost its weight, and even levitated. This discovery was reported on German Science Journal in 1927. Let me see more details. First, 
The electric static field was produced horizontally by two rhombus shaped plates. Second, very short waves or outer short waves were kept applying to the piece of quartz vertically. Then the center of the quartz became white and white area expanded and the whole quartz became white. This interesting phenomenon occurred when it was lower than 10 degrees Celsius. And a certain voltage and specific angle were applied. The crystal of quartz expanded. When the kilowatts of electric power were applied for a long time, each side of the quartz expanded about 20 times as large as before. Kowski and Frost attempted to weigh the change of the quartz weight. Then the quartz is placed on one side of the balance and the weight for scales were placed on the other side for balancing. After high frequency current is applied under the horizontal electrostatic field, the quartz side arm of the balance went up. Moreover, the quartz lifted a set of balance too. This was successful even if the 25 kg weight is attached to the quartz. That is, strong anti-gravity effect was produced. What can we find from these two cases? I think you found the important common points. First, there is a high possibility that both the stone and quartz may have vibrated at their own natural frequencies. Second, electrostatic fields were applied to both stones horizontally. Vibrations and electricity is the key to understand ancient anti-gravity technologies. In fact, there are other impressive cases more. I'm going to show you those examples from the next time.